I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is April 4th, 2018. And in this video, I'm going to test the limits of my Prusa i3 Mark III by printing out the all-in-one 3D printer test from user Mazda 107 on Thingiverse. Okay, so this all-in-one 3D printer, printer test happens to be Thing 2656594. And if you actually go on Thingiverse and you go into Explore, you'll find out it's one of the top things people are printing. It's really cool. So if you go to Things, and you go into popular. It's probably a good place to start. I like starting there because I'm new to 3D printing. See what other people are printing. What's what's really popular? This is like set number five right now. So it is really popular and useful. And now for me, I really want to download it. So I'm really curious about the overhang because here I see this 3D print and it can go all the way up to an 80% overhang. And to me, that's just amazing that it can do it and there's also some other tests on here that i don't fully understand some that some that i do understand is like hey how accurate is it making diameters and there's a little bridging test but there's some other tests here that aren't quite so clear to me being a new person but i still want to print it out to see how well my printer can do so with that uh let me download it so let me go down here to thing files uh click on that and get the Okay, 3D printer, STL, STL. Let me just uh, test fix. Let me go for that one. Let me down this 3D printer, test fixed. There we go. And there it is in my downloads folder. Let me go open up Prusa Control. Because I, wa I want to do, do this without any tweaking. So my goal right here is I have a Prusa i3 Mark III that I put together um, as a kit, but I, I haven't done any adjustments, no tweaking, no nothing, no special settings. And I want to use the Prusa Control which has the default settings to see how things work just using default settings. Nothing special. So we drop that in there. And there we are. So that looks really cool. So I'm going to be amazed if it can actually, how far it can go. Um, I had some videos here recently where I did some bridging, some long bridging, uh, doing uh, this bunk bed my daughter want. And I was amazed at how well it did. And this had a little tiny bridging test, which, are, which should work pretty cool. Uh, there's some hole tests showing how big and accurate those are. Oh, diameter wall test. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then I guess see how this will be interesting. How I've seen I've done a few videos where things were small and went up really tall. So I think that'll I think that'll work. And then support. I can't quite read that. Support test. Okay, I don't really know what that means. Support test, just a, seems like a strange bridge. Support test. Oh, there's some little small slices in there. Okay, that one isn't fully, I don't fully understand that one. Uh, but I just want to generate this code with standard stuff, nothing special. I'm using PLA. Uh, my quality is just optimal, just normal. And using standard infill 20%, which, well, I think they suggested doing 100% infill because there's not, well, I'll just be standard. Let me be standard. Let me just leave it standard infill even because most of this probably doesn't have much infill. And that's how we operate anyway. You know, you put an infill, you don't, you're not doing solid. Uh, supports, doesn't need any supports, obviously for this. And hit generate. Dun, dun, dun. And there we go. So let me go. Yeah, see, there's some infill there, which I think is going to be fine. And that's kind of how we operate anyway. And then once you get up here, there's infill on those angles, which is what I'm typically going to do. So I want to see how well it works. Cool. So let me uh, click on here and save the G code. I'm going to save it to my desktop for now. And then with that, let me go run this and see how well it does. Okay, so it's been successfully printed. I'll have a slow motion here print, a time lapse here print in a while. But it uh, it printed all the way up to that 80%. I don't know how well this is going to show up on film. Uh, but it did. For me, that was the big thing. How far could it angle over? And you can see it made it, it made it all the way. It can actually do an 80%. That's just amazing to me. That's just so cool. Uh, but if you look at it underneath, it starts to have some issues as it gets higher and higher. Let's see if I can 
show that really well. It starts to get this little, oops, <laughs> starts to get this little uh, boogering up there. So it's building up underneath and the top looks okay, but there's, there's nothing supporting it there. So it kind of has this little issue there, but it looks like I have really no issues at all up till, it starts having issues probably 55, 60% going over that overhang. And that is just awesome. Um, and the bridging, you know, the bridging worked pretty well, but I kind of expected that having seen my uh, other, the other thing I did with the uh, bunk bed, I, I would see that's no problem on this Prusa i3 Mark III. Um, these little tiny guys rising up over here, you know, got a little fuzzy, but you can see they, they went up. And some of the other stuff I'm not exactly sure what to look for exactly, because I'm still, you know, fairly new to 3D printing. So things have been working pretty well for me, so I've been pretty happy. Um, but then some of the other things, if you actually look in on, um, let me see, probably should over here. If you look in on here, where the whole test and whatnot, all these words down here, I can make out whole test on here, but like 3D printer test by Marion Tropas, uh, I can barely read that. The four millimeter and three millimeter, I really can't read that at all. It's probably hard to show here on film. Um, so it's not fine detail. I'm just using the default nozzle for it. Might be interesting if you had a, a finer nozzle point to maybe you could do better. Um, but then some of the interesting measuring things. So I went and bought. I, I had a I had a um, uh, calipers before, but I just had an inches caliper. It's driving, driving me nuts doing the conversion. So I went over on Amazon and bought this uh, caliper, which is AccuSize six inch, and it has inches and metric on it, and so. It's been really useful to, to, to do that. I just recently got it, but let me see what we have here. So if I look at some of these these measurements here, da, da, da. if you look down here, it says, hey, this should be, all these little walls here should be 1.0 millimeter walls. These little tiny walls over here. And it may be hard to show. Ah, just need more cameras, right? Or to be left-handed. But if I, Go down on this wall. There you go. You can see it's pretty much uh, that wall is one millimeter thick. It is. Uh, <laughs> it's just hard. To, it's hard to hold this and do that at the same time. There we go. May have to uh, see if I can hold it right there. So you can see that little red line there should be pointing down to be one millimeter thick, and it is. If I test the other ones, they seem to be doing the same thing. And in testing, you know, the other guy with four millimeter and, and 14 millimeter, it's, it seems to be pretty accurate. Uh, so, boy, that really, it worked. It worked really well. I'm pretty stoked about it. I just didn't think, I thought it might get to the 30 or 40% overhang. That was a, the big thing I, I was really wanted to test. And then just become a glob. Uh, but it's just amazing it can do that. And I, I'm just using the default settings. Maybe there's some settings you can set that actually will make this better. Maybe making it, uh, having no infill will make it better. I mean, having 100% infill. But it worked really well. Uh, cool. I think, you know, this is probably one of the first five or ten things you want to print if you are new to 3D printing. Because you can see the capabilities of your printer. Uh, Okay, so with that, let's go over the numbers. So here's the really quick numbers. So first, before I go into the numbers, here's how I base my numbers off. Uh, first, I use 10 cents per kilowatt for my electricity cost. And I also use 6 cents per meter of filament. And that's based on the idea that a one kilogram roll is roughly about 20 bucks. And that a one kilogram roll has 333 meters of filament. Therefore, you get your 6 cents per meter. And if you use that number, and, and anyway, those are the numbers I'm using. So with all that in mind, the time it took to print this out for me was six hours and five minutes. It took 5.2 cents worth of electricity, and it also took 15.82 meters of filament, which comes out to about 95 cents worth of filament. You add electricity cost to that, and it comes out to $1 just to print out this whole test. And I'm pretty stoked. Worked really well. I'm glad that someone made this out there so that we can do really quick tests like this and see what your printer is capable of. So I'm very, very happy uh, with the Prusa i3 Mark III that I bought. 
It's my first 3D printer. And what a nice introduction to 3D printing that out of the box, that a simple person like me being fairly new, I didn't have to do any tweaks. I'm using the regular settings and I got results like this. That is just so cool. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll add on the end of this video, a longer time lapse on the construction of this because I like watching, I think 3D time lapses are pretty cool to watch.
Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we are doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.